Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's revisit once again measures for happiness testing. To some extent you know various ways to measure happiness. I, I think simplest example is psychological testing and I have borrowed this test once again just to show how do we measure someone's happiness by using psychological testing. When we talk about a psychological test actually these are standardized tools and developing psychological tests itself a scientific method in which we use rigorous statistical technique which I discussed in the class number 3 or chapter number 3. So, when we say psychological test there are various psychological tests based on various theories. Now, you know all those theories as well as we can identify some of these psychological tests like multidimensional positive psychological well-being scales, scales for psychological well-being. So, all these scales are based on a particular theory and then they define what are the operational definitions which they have taken in this psychological test and then they decide factors under this psychological test. So, similarly general well-being schedule, mental health continuum which we have discussed again and again in previous classes, positive and negative affect schedule, satisfaction with life scale, subjective happiness scale which I showed in the last slide flourishing scale and scale for positive and negative experiences. So, like that there are a long list of psychological tests on happiness which are based on different theories and in all these uh, psychological tests to some extent they share their percentage of variance and to some extent they are unique as I discussed in previous classes also. There are number of psychological tests. For example, this uh, meta-analytic research in which they reviewed 99 self-report measures for assessing well-being in adults. So, Linton et al. in 2006, they uh, reviewed the literature and they said 99 measures or psychological test of well-being and they identified uh, these psychological tests covered 196 dimensions of well-being and main dimensions were mental well-being, social well-being, physical well-being, spiritual well-being, activities and functioning and personal circumstances. So, like that I think now you are well equipped with this idea is that uh, there are number of psychological tests to measure happiness or well-being or mental health. So, broadly psychological testing you know in some cases along with the psychological testing which I discussed in one of my research only we get some more ideas and in which we ask please give us the reason why you chose the response. So, when you are giving these reasons then you are giving specific responses. So, then we can identify some specific culture oriented responses, gender oriented responses, age oriented responses and broader view we, we get in such kind of studies. Because in psychological testing one limitation is we provide you or provide participants force choice responses. So, strongly for example, strongly uh, disagree to strongly agree. So, in this case we do not ask what are the reasons behind these questions. So, if we have some ways to get even reasons behind that then we will be getting enriched data and with this data we can get more insight on the responses. So, then that is mixed methodology in which we are getting quantitative from uh, such kind of responses and qualitative from such kind of responses and we support our uh, results quantitative with qualitative approach. In some cases we just focus on qualitative data uh, collection techniques. There could be various techniques like free association method in one of the research if you could recall that was used. Sometime we use interview methods and uh, semi structured interview method or open ended questions we ask to uh, explore happiness and its related factors. Sometime focus group discussions could be used for uh, getting qualitative data 
and uh, maybe in some cases day reconstruction method. In day reconstruction method, you are recalling your uh, all the day activities and when you are recalling all those activities, then a researcher trying to find out when you were happy, when you were not happy, when you were satisfied, when you were upset. So, like that then they uh, during this reconstruction of your day, they are identifying your frequency of your responses and in some cases even case study can be used. So, like that we have uh, pure quantitative techniques, pure qualitative techniques and in some cases we may use in between say mixed methodology. So, this way we can divide it in three categories. One in which we have four choice questions and quantitative data collection is our objective. Second one is we are getting some broad responses or responses in terms of sentences. In some cases, we our objective is to collect qualitative data only. So, uh, broadly we can divide them in three categories, only quantitative data, only qualitative data or mixture of both. So, then once we have these kind of psychological tests which are well standardized, then we try to understand how happiness is spread in particular culture. For example, there are some responses here. Myers in 2000 reported that uh, about 60 percent of Americans described themselves as pretty happy and 30 percent said they were very happy. So, in this case we are able to know how they perceive happiness as per certain questions in questionnaires. Similarly, in another research Gallup organization in 2010 reported that 48.4 percent of Americans felt a lot of happiness, enjoyment without a lot of stress or worries. So, it means about 50 percent population feels happy. Diener analyzed subjective well-being reports from over 1 million people in 45 nations and found that the average global self report of subjective well being was 6.75 on a 10 point scale or 67.5 on a 100 point scale. So, it means we can say on an average score of happiness is above average and that is 6.75 on a 10 point scales. Diener and colleagues found that people who scored a 10 on a 10 point scale of happiness were actually worse off than those who scored an 8 or 9. Those who scored less than 10 were more successful than the super happy. Super happy here means 10 out of 10 and they observed that they were doing better. The people who uh, scored 8 or 9 including in at income, uh, educational achievement and political participations. So, on the basis of this research, they highlighted that having a score 7 or 8 out of 10 is better rather having 100 percent or 10 out of 10. So, total happiness may be counterproductive or inefficient as they have highlighted in their research. And if it is a 7 and 8, that is enough to grow in our life as per this research. The next question is, why we are talking about happiness, why it is so important factor, why we are talking about happiness, flourishing, mental health and related factors. And in recent years, it has been highlighted a lot. Yeah, even if we talk about various definitions of positive psychology, then one of the definition is positive psychology is the scientific study of happiness. Why do we give that much importance to this area? because there are various researches which were conducted by various scholars and they observed that happy people live longer, happy people are healthier than unhappy people. They also reported that happy people use health services less compared to unhappy people and they take less days off work and they are more productive, they have higher income more likely to be in long term relationships they are. And because of all those benefits, now scholars giving lot of importance to happiness. Some more researcher have highlighted why happiness is important and they also reported that happy individuals are more likely than their less happy peers to have fulfilling marriages and relationships. They have higher incomes, superior work performance they have, community involvement more they have robust health and a long life. And because of various benefits, we are giving very much importance to the this field, the happiness. In addition, 
positive emotions lead to better learning. It has been observed by Paris and Paris in 2005. It is also observed that happiness is positively correlated with various positive personality traits. For example, this study shows us happy people are more confident, they are more optimist, they have higher level of sociability or friendliness, they are more helpful, they are less jealous and more resilient having higher level of creativity and they have more balanced lifestyle better quality of physical health they have. So, because of all those positive personality traits connection with happiness, we give lots of importance to happiness. Now, another section or sector is what is correlation or connection between the brain and happiness, because brain is very important for us, our thinking, reasoning, problem solving, all inner processes are going on in our brain only. Let us know what are the connections between the brain and happiness. The brain is the home of all our feelings including happiness, sadness, fear, etc. So, all mental processes actually take place in our brain. Frontal lobes play a role in both emotions and thinking. Therefore, thinking and emotions affect one another. It means when we have happy thoughts, we have a happy emotion. On the other hand, when we have unhappy thoughts, we have negative emotions. The study is saying that physical exercise and mindfulness meditation can strengthen activity in the left prefrontal cortex and that is correlated with happiness. During physical exercise, our brain also release some feel good chemicals, some chemicals which are actually facilitating our happiness. In short, if you want to be happy, keep your brain happy and there are certain ways to keep our uh, brain happy say physical exercise, mindfulness meditation and maybe some other activities which will be discussed in next classes. There is a newly developed concept a happiness advantage. It means if we can raise our level of positivity in the present then our brain experience happiness advantage and that is why we have better productivity. Our brain at positive is 31 percent more productive than at negative, neutral or when it is stressed. If we can find a way of becoming positive in the present, then our brain will work more successfully because a happier brain works harder, faster and more intelligently. A happiness advantage means when our brain is happy, we are able to do harder, faster and more intelligently work. Dopamine floods into our system when we are positive and it makes us happier. So, when your brain is happy, it releases some chemicals neurotransmitter which help us to have higher level of happiness and that is positive uh, cycle in which we are happy. That is why we are generating some happy chemicals in our brain and it is increasing our happiness level. Professor Sean Anker he gave this formula of happiness advantage. He said 10 percent of our happiness is due to external world. On the other hand, 90 percent the way our brain process the world. So, if we change the way our brain sees the world, then we change our formula for happiness and success. He also observed that there is 25 percent job successes are predicted by IQ. On the other hand, 75 percent are predicted by various other factors. Those factors are optimism level, social support, your ability to see stress as a challenge instead of as a threat and there are various other factors which are contributing in this 75 percent like emotional intelligence. In emotions chapter, we will discuss about it. So, when we talk about general formula for happiness, our traditional style is success lead to happiness. On the other hand, in recent research, researchers focusing more on happiness leads to success and they are saying that when we are happy, then we are more productive, we are more creative, we are facilitating our uh, positive interpersonal relations and that is why these all factors lead to success. I think you can correlate easily it with broaden and bend theory of positive emotions which we covered in positive emotions chapter.
if you can raise somebody's level of positivity in the present, then their brain experiences what we now call a happiness advantage as I discussed in earlier slide also. It means when our brain is positive, it performs significantly better than does a negative or neutral or stressed level. If we become more positive in the present, then our brain works even more successfully as we are able to work harder, faster and more intelligently. Now, next point is if it is so important, happiness is so important, then why do not we give importance to this area or why do not we give importance to happiness? Dr. Raj Raghunathan wrote very interesting book, If You Are So Smart, Why Are not You Happy? In this book and in his research, he observed that when we give importance to various goals and when we are talking about or taking in action, then our responses are different. And he observed that he had two questions, one priority in action or what is on your guinea's wish list and another question was importance of various goals. He observed that when we take it in action or guinea's wish list, then we give topmost priority to wealth, then to success, then fame and then happiness. On the other hand, when we give importance otherwise without any action, then topmost important factor for us is happiness, then success, then intelligence or knowledge and then mental health. So, somewhere it seems uh, our action oriented responses are different. On the other hand, otherwise when we think about happiness, then our responses are different. Our next point is, can we improve happiness level? What determines happiness? If we go with this study, then 50 percent we are saying that it is because of intentional activities as well as because of circumstances. So, by changing intentional activities as well as circumstances, we can change someone's level of happiness. On the other hand, 50 percent role is set point. Set point means this portion is more contributed by genetic and environmental factors and that is why we have stable patterns in our behavior and that is our baseline. If you connect it with previous class where we said that there is a set point and uh, through certain activities it may take ups or downs but temporarily. After certain period, we get again once stable pattern that is our stable level or can say nature of an individual. And that is why in same situation, different people show different level of happiness because of their set point. So, when we psychologists are saying can we improve someone's happiness level, then our main focus is on intentional activities as well as on circumstances. And for that we develop uh, intervention programs. Intervention programs means strategies to improve well-being and when we are moving towards interventions or strategies to improve well-being, then we are moving towards positive psychology to applied positive psychology. Our attention is shifting from basic science to its applications. Can positive psychology make people lasting happier? There are number of intervention programs and even before positive psychology, there were various scholars who worked in this direction. So, from the Buddhism through the human potential movement of the 1960s, through the pioneer work of uh, for DC in 1907-1983, we discussed about it in last classes also, through the self-improvement industry of the 1990s, at least 100 interventions claiming to increase happiness lasting have been proposed and in recent years, this number is definitely quite high. So, when we say you know effectiveness of such kind of intervention programs, then as I discussed in class number 3, random assignment placebo controlled research or studies are available. In all these studies, we try to do very scientific research. For studying effect of these intervention programs, we uh, use random assignment placebo control studies. And in these studies, as I discussed in the third class, we compare control group with placebo group, control group with experimental group and placebo group with experimental group. And I think you can easily understand for effect of medicines or psychological or no uh, significance between all these groups. These indications give us new insight about the particular study. So, 
there are various intervention programs or strategies to improve our happiness, character strengths and other positive psychology constructs. Intervention programs can be divided in two groups. One is deliberately delivered modules. In deliberately delivered modules, we have group of some modules and we uh, display those modules during intervention program and through pre and post testing we study effectiveness of this program. Such kind of modules will be discussed in next slides. On the other hand, to identify existing socio-cultural factors or maybe religious spiritual practices which facilitate our well-being and then reinforce them through intervention programs. So, for example, in such kind of programs, we can identify some religious spiritual practices and by doing pre and post testing, we can study how effective these are. So, these are two ways to have uh, effectiveness of certain programs. First, let us know what are those strategies which have identified by positive psychologist as uh, well-being enhancing strategies. So, these are deliberately delivered strategies or intervention programs. Second is existing practices in religion, spirituality or in local communities. Let us take example of both. So, there are some strategies which are highlighted as well as tested by positive psychologists and they are saying that these strategies actually work in various situations and now these are well identified strategies. They are saying that doing acts of kindness, if you have uh, such kind of activity in some of the sessions, then definitely you may have change on certain well being indicators. Second one is writing about positive experiences practicing gratitude by counting one's blessings. So, they ask them to count your blessing during such kind of sessions. Hopeful goal directing thinking, solution focused coaching. So, you are learning some solution focused coaching during this process, savoring or enjoying the moment, writing about best possible selves. So, they ask write about your best possible self in which mode you think you will be best. So, let us know a little bit more about deliberately delivered strategies. Those are intervention programs as well existing practices in religion, spirituality or in local communities. When I talk about these strategies, then uh, some of these highlighted strategies have been borrowed from well established intervention programs like doing act of kindness. So, during sessions they provide certain settings where you have to do certain acts for kindness, writing about positive experiences. So, they ask to write about some positive experiences, practicing gratitude by counting one's blessings. So, uh, you just count your blessings during the sessions, hopeful goal directed thinking solution focused coaching they provide during the sessions, savoring, enjoying the moment, writing about best possible selves. So, these kind of sessions are provided by the experimenters and after the sessions and before the sessions, they do testing on uh, well-being indicators and then they say on the basis of comparison of pre and post testing, they just study effectiveness of these programs. On the other hand, in existing practices, we can identify some local practices. For example, in one of our research, we identified that how satsang, satsang means singing folk songs in a group is uh, contributing to our well-being. Like that there could be various religious spiritual practices. We can think about celebrating festivals or community functions and what kind of impact they have on our well-being. So, these are two main examples. Let us know some more practices which have been highlighted by positive psychologists in terms of sessions in intervention programs. This is very interesting study by Bollier et al in 2013 in which they had meta-analytic research and they identified well established sessions or sub, sub intervention programs which were used in broad intervention programs. So, let us know what are the techniques or what are the strategies or practices which they claim by doing those uh, strategies or those uh, uh, particular practices, we may improve our well-being. These practices are resilience improving exercises. So, they have some exercises through which we improve our resilience. You must be knowing that resilience means bouncing back from adverse conditions. 
optimism and gratitude exercise they have during these sessions, doing acts of kindness, writing about positive experiences, practicing gratitude by counting one's blessings, writing about best possible selves, rehearsal of positive statements, thinking about positive life experiences. They also highlighted on hopeful goal directing thinking, self management oriented activities they have during these sessions, positive bibliography or the use of selecting reading materials as therapeutic messages. So, something where you have therapeutic messages, cultivate secret moments, solution focused coaching, life coaching and attainment of goals, use your strengths in a new way and use your strengths also, working for wellness program, positive future thinking, projecting a positive self in the future, uh, how you can improve, how you can have positive self in future, savoring the moment, strengths exercises, positive thinking life coaching and attainment of goals, positive writing. So, like that they have number of sessions which have been well established now in various intervention programs. So, once you decide a particular program as per age, as per gender, as per locality, as per nature of participants, you may borrow some of these sessions or strategies and then you can make your tailor made program. And in this program, you can decide whether you are interested to take 4, 6 or 8 strategies. And uh, then uh, again, I am repeating same point, these sessions would be in between and you will be doing pre-testing and post-testing uh, to see effectiveness of these programs. So, for example, these are two examples in which they have highlighted some of these strategies in their particular program, like active constructive responding gratitude visit, life summary, three good things, savoring, strengths were used in one of the intervention program. On the other hand, in another intervention program, they borrowed three good things, signature strengths, self-compassion, optimism, compassion actions, gratitude interventions. So, by combining all those interventions, they prepared one module and then they study how effective it is. On the other hand, some scholars focused on other way to identify positive intervention programs or uh, strategies which help us to improve our well-being. So, in this case actually scholars try to find out happy habits. In this happy habits, first of all they did exploratory research. In this exploratory research, they asked people what do they do to get happiness. Then they made a checklist and they provide this checklist in another research and they identified how it is rated by people to get happy habits. So, in this research they observed that at individual level participants highlighted that pursuing goals that are important to me 73.7 percent people rated this strategy. Being optimism 68.4 percent people rated this strategy. Doing physical exercise or sports, 65.8 percent rated this strategy. Savoring life joys, 61.4 percent. Acting like a happy person, 60.5 percent people rated this strategy. Doing activities that make me feel in the moment, so mindfulness kind of activities, 59.6 percent people highlighted this strategy. Practicing religion or spirituality 41.2 percent, using strategies that help me cope and stress or adversity 40.4 percent people rated this happy habit. Then avoiding overthinking and comparing myself to others 37.7 percent people rated this is important and they use this strategy in terms of happy habits. Practicing meditation 20.2 percent people highlighted it. Happiness habit while dealing with others, then they highlighted that practicing acts of kindness towards others, 77.2 percent people highlighted it, expressing gratitude, 68.4 percent, nurturing my social relationships, 62.3 percent and forgive others, 58.8 percent people highlighted in terms of happy habits. So, th these are some other strategies, we can say these strategies are like lay strategies, what kind of strategies 
people use when they uh, want to get happiness and these lay strategies are from the people, people which kind of strategies using and we just uh, compile all of them and then we prepare a list of happy habits. So, there are various platforms to deliver intervention programs. For example, you could find number of programs available on online, online intervention programs we have. In classroom settings, school settings, from school settings number of programs nowadays we have. Like even in India, happiness curriculum in Delhi schools. Organization settings, there could be some programs for this setting. In clinical settings, even clinical psychologists using positive psychological strategies or intervention programs. Community or social settings, they have a religious spiritual settings can be highlighted in such kind of programs. For example, in religion and spirituality, already they have a number of programs, say 3 days program, 5 days program, 7 days program and in all these programs, if we just highlight how these are helping to have better well-being or better state of mind. So, in all these settings, we positive psychologists just observe the things and by doing pre and post testing, we can highlight how certain programs which are proposed by some particular religious or spiritual groups, how these are effective. And nowadays, there are various applications even in mobile. So, there are various platforms on internet, on classroom, in organizations, in communities, social settings, where positive psychologists are delivering certain programs and then highlighting effectiveness of those programs. Second group is to identify existing socio-cultural factors or religious practices which facilitate our well-being and then reinforce them as per our research findings. And in this book, Religion and Spirituality Across Cultures, in this book actually they have highlighted practices from various religions like from Islam, from Hinduism, from Jainism, from Sikhism, from Buddhism and in all these practices, they are highlighted that by doing those practices, how a people are getting better well-being or better health, physical as well as psychological. So, that is why I think we should not ignore this domain which is very important and studies supporting such kind of researches nowadays. A cultural orientation is very important to highlight uh, socio-cultural factors or religious spiritual factors and uh, even Indian scholars have been highlighting such kind of studies. For example, Professor Dalal in 2010 mentioned that sitting rather too comfortably in the pigeon holes of university departments which do not mirror socio-cultural realities of the common man in India. Psychologists have increasingly chosen to remain insular or narrow-minded and self-absorbed. So, that is why main objective is to understand our own culture and to develop socio-cultural issues based modules and religious spiritual aspect based modules and study their effectiveness. I think that could be very unique contribution to the world of psychologists from India. I think to count culture as a major influence on the development and manifestation of human strengths and good living is a significant factor and we should not ignore. Our next study just supporting this point a further, we did one research and uh, this research was satsang culture specific effective practice for well-being. And uh, this uh, research published in Positive Nations and Positive Communities book in which collective, qualitative, culture sensitive processes in positive psychology were highlighted. And uh, that is why our research satsang culture specific effective practice for well-being was very relevant for this book and it is published study now. So, let us know what did we do in this and how it is contributing to the field of positive psychology. So, let us discuss this research which happened here in local community. For this research, research question was is singing folk songs acts as music therapy intervention, especially singing bhajan in satsang. A group of women 25 to 30 women participants almost every day were interviewed and had focus group discussions with them in this study. Mean age of these women was 55 years and range was 45 years to 85 years. 45 years 8 women and 85 years 4 members were there. 
education wise they were not highly educated. 10th pass with the teaching training about 50 percent women out of them, 8th to 12th homemaker 25 percent and uneducated homemaker were about 25 percent. Occupation wise all were homemakers and 50 percent among them were retired school teachers. This study was conducted on these women. They actually come daily in local parks to sing songs or folk songs we can say. So, you could see in this picture women can be singing bhajans in this image. Educated women helped the others to sing new songs by reading out uh, from the uh, copies or uh, reading out this content. Came with accessories such as water bottle, stick, mats for sitting comfortably. Sometimes they come with their grandchildren, so that way they are contributing to the family also. There are some more photographs sometime. On auspicious occasions, group is invited at members house for satsang, so they visit their members houses also in some settings. At the end, they share prasad as well as donation and uh, you could see there are various groups, for example, another group also singing. So, this is quite common practice in Delhi and uh, its surrounding as well as I think it is in North India everywhere it is like this data has been taken from Haryana. So, we observed that when they are singing these songs and through interview and focus group discussions, we highlighted some of the themes and through these themes, we are saying that by doing this local activity, they are getting almost same benefits which they could get through an intervention program. And if it is so, then we should promote such kind of activities in our community. So, first let us talk about results. We observed through focus group discussion as well as interviews data analysis, we observed that the themes emerged from the discussions were they are free from stresses during singing. So, when they are singing during the, this period, they are away from stresses. Healthier interpersonal relations they have, you know they have interpersonal relation with their age group and a similar kind of women. So, they observed that they have very rich interpersonal relationship. This activity can be counted as entertainment of the day. Entertainment of the day is very significant activity in almost all intervention programs which are proposed by positive psychologist. Social support and family contribution. So, strong social support as well as family contribution as they come with their grandchildren and they play in the um, park when they are singing songs and all. So, that way actually they have quite strong social support as well as family relations they visit outside. On the other hand, you know especially old age women, they do not go outside. So, that is good way to approach other women and spend some time with them. They are actively involved in pro-social activities. They donate in different organizations like Vridha Ashram, Anath Ashram, etc. So, now research is showing that pro-social activities as well as spending money on others or donations, these activities contribute positively to our well-being. And in this age, singing folk songs or bhajans, that is purpose of life because this is very relevant religious activity in this locality, sharing with same age group they have. So, during this period, they are dealing with their own age group. So, similar kind of motives, similar kind of talks they may have. So, all these factors or themes which emerged through interviews as well as focus group discussions highlighted here that they are actually contributing to their well-being. The, on the other hand, if we take some new modules, I think now you can connect easily with the strategies which I discussed in last slides and I mentioned that how these strategies have been used by positive psychologist for improving our well-being. So, maybe some of these activities are not very appealing for them or it is just like alien activities. And that is why they uh, might be not highlighted or not appreciated much by such kind of women. So, uh, by uh, giving all those references, we ask the question, do they need to go through the intervention module for enhancing their well-being? Rather, 
be supported that they should actually participate in such kind of activities more and these activities actually already helping them to have higher level of well-being. Similarly, it has also observed that these spiritual religious messages in folk songs they are singing. In this book, Spirituality and Indian Psychology, uh, Professor Bhauk has highlighted this model and in this model, he is saying that there are some vikaras like Kam, Krodh, Molo, which are reducing our well-being and there are various paths in terms of yoga like Dhyan Yoga and various other yogas which are helping us to have higher level of well-being. And in one of our research, we uh, highlighted that how similar kind of messages are being sung by these women. So, I think this is very good way to disseminate our information which may help to have higher level of well-being. In the series of such kind of researches, we also discussed about perceived quality of life in one of our research paper. And during this experience, when I was trying to find out quality of life, how do they perceive again older rural women. And in this study, I asked them a simple question, what do you think in last 10 years, your quality of life has been improved or uh, deteriorated or it is at the same mode. पिछले 10 साल में आपका जो जीवन जीने का स्तर है, वो पहले से बढ़िया हुआ है, बराबर है या पहले से घटा है. And in this question, I was confused because some of them were very positive, others were not. And during those discussions, I came to know actually there are two main factors. When they are taking into account facilities available and when they are taking into account interpersonal relations. And broadly, message was when they are taking into account interpersonal relationships, they said definitely it has been deteriorated. On the other hand, when they are talking about facilities, facilities available and they said definitely it has been improved. So, it means you know I think with our previous discussions, you are able to understand that interpersonal relationships are hallmark of our happiness. On the other hand, its perception in our community is that interpersonal relationships are being deteriorating in our recent period. So, conclusion from this research was we need to reinforce, acknowledge and maintain our society strengths and these are interpersonal relations. So, this research is highlighted that we should focus on our culture, on our socio-cultural factors, religious spiritual factors and then try to understand how we can improve well-being of our people or well-being of Indian people. In this series, Next topic is suggestions for a happy life. There are various scholars who have highlighted some points or ways of living our life and these are the suggestions for having a happier life. So, let us start with David Meyer's suggestions. He mentioned that realize that enduring happiness does not come from success. Happiness is a process not a destination. So, each and every moment of our life should have happiness take control of your time. So, where you are spending your time, you should know about it. And happy people feel in control of their lives, often aided by mastering their use of time. So, they should be master how and why they should use their time. Third factor is act happy. It means we should consciously choose those activities which are making us happy, like smiling expression. Seeking a work and leisure that engage your skills. Ultimately, we want to get purpose in life or meaningful uh, activities. That is why our activities should support uh, certain skills. Fifth point is maintain physical health. Sound minds reside in sound bodies. Sixth, give your body the sleep it wants because during this period, our body mind repaired and that is why proper time to our sleep, give priority to close relationships. I think it is all mark of our happiness and very important for us. Focus beyond the self, help others. There are various studies saying that when you have positive relationship with others and have high level of compassion, forgiveness, gratitude, helping others, then you are getting more happiness. 
keep a gratitude journal those who pause each day to reflect on some positive aspects of their lives experience heightened well-being such as their health friends family freedom education uh, natural surroundings and so on so when we are doing gratitude journaling during this period we are generating positive thoughts and our positive thoughts are generating positive emotions which lead to happiness ninth one is nurture your spiritual self some scholars have focused on spiritual domain a lot so these are the highlighted factors or highlighted activities by myers to get happiness similarly another recent work in which they have highlighted on five factors connect be active take notice keep learning and give so in connect make connections with friends family colleagues and neighbors i think it's again i'll repeat same point hallmark of happiness they help enrich your life with new experiences and opportunities second is be active and some of the scholars focusing on active activities in which you are getting happiness they are saying that get moving walk skip run dance move your muscles and exercise not only makes you feel good it keeps you healthy so therefore pick a physical activity that you enjoy and you should keep it continue for happiness next one is take notice that's mindfulness and in one of the class i'll discuss only on mindfulness which is very important to have higher level of happiness be mindful be curious notice the things around you the weather the landscape the mood and feelings of the people around you this way you learn to appreciate the things that matters and that is very important to notice our surrounded environment keep learning love of learning even dinner has highlighted this point we never stop learning keep trying something new uh, for example a new course a new game or new skill and when we keep learning then we are getting higher level of happiness and challenges keep us on our toes and increase our confidence and excitement in our day give be generous with your time your knowledge and your talent giving to friends families and even strangers be thankful smile at uh, people and volunteer for help so again i think uh, you could easily connect some of these factors are overlapping and all uh, scholars have highlighted on certain activities for example pro social spending donating and these are very important factors for getting happiness here i have taken some messages from ted talks i think getting messages from ted talks is really interesting and it works like edutainment approach and uh, here because scholars focus more in terms of translational research or knowledge translation and layman easily can understand their messages so that's why uh, i have taken a summary of these ted talks and i recommend to watch these ted talks on youtube so let's take in this series first messages first message is by a dinner in terms of recipe for happiness he has focused on positive social relationships positive mental attitude he also mentioned that money is not everything it is not that money doesn't count but money has to have the right place it should not be highlighted more than our social relations as he has mentioned that if we sacrifice our social relationships uh, for earning more money we are unlikely to drive happiness from it so after certain period social relations are more important than money strive for personally meaningful goals we should have some personal meaningful goals in our life happiness is important not just because it feels good but it makes the individuals functions better as uh, you know previous scholars also mentioned on this point in the in his next talk he is talking about what you need to be happy he again emphasized on social relationships activity that you love in life and uh, work so active leisure learning new things highlighted by various scholars having life goals that are bigger than oneself creativity religious spiritual activities or this domain has been highlighted once again by a dinner in this talk then next one is which is very interesting study by robert uh, waldinger the good life 
and in this uh, study they have focused on interpersonal relationships and role of relationships in our life and uh, studies are very interesting. That is why I have selected uh, among these uh, TED talks this talk. He has started his message with this study in which he is saying that there was a recent survey on millennials. You must be knowing that as per birth orders, now we have particular name of certain generations. So, this millennials born between 1980 to early 2000, this group, he is talking about particularly this group, asking them what their most important life goals were. Over 80 percent said that a major life goal for them was to get rich and another 50 percent of these same young adults said that another major life goal was to become famous. So, broadly these young participants saying that life goals which are very, very important for them to get rich having more money as well as famous, these are two main goals of their life. On the other hand, he is talking about a 75 year longitudinal Harvard study of adult development and then he has focused on relationships and he is saying that good relationships keep us happier and healthier and these are very, very important. And through this study, he is talking about three big lessons about relationships. Very interesting these lessons are, let us take one by one. Social connections are really good for us, loneliness kills, that is his first message. And he is saying that people who are more socially connected to family, to friends, to community are happier, they are physically healthier and they live longer than people who are less well connected. On the other hand, he is talking about isolated or lonely people also, uh, comparatively more isolated and lonely people. He mentioned that they are less happy, their health declined earlier in midlife, their brain functioning declined sooner and they live shorter lives than people who are not lonely. So, that is why here message is if you feel connected then you have happy and healthy even old age. Second lesson was big lesson learned from this study is that it is the quality of your close relationships that matters rather number of and there are various scholars who are saying that quality of your close relationship is very important, rather how many relations you have in your life. The most happily partners men and women of uh, this study reported in their 80s that on the day when they had more physical pain their mood stayed just as happy. So, physical pain is actually isolated, it is not generalized to the life. On the other hand, the people who were in unhappy relationships on the days when they reported more physical pain, it was magnified by their emotional pain. So, it has been observed that the people who had unhappy relationships during physical pain, this emotional pain actually add on and that is why they had higher level of pains. Third group said big lesson is that good relationships do not just protect our bodies, they protect our brains also. So, not only physically or mentally, but even brain activities wise, the people who had a good relationship, healthy and happy relationship, they had better brain activities as compared to unhappy relationship people. Being in a securely attached relationship to another person in your 80s is protective as per this study. People who are in relationships where they really feel they can count on the other person in times of need, their memories stayed sharper for longer period. I think you can easily connect with this question that was the main part of World Happiness Report also. And the question was count on the other people in time of need. So, if you count someone, you are able to count someone, whenever you need someone, someone is available for you. So, if you count such kind of relations, then your memories stay sharper for longer period. People in relationships where they feel they really cannot count on the other one, those are the people who experienced earlier memory declines. 
So, message from this study is if you have happy and healthy relationship, then your mind, your body, your uh, management of pain as well as brain activities sharper. On the other hand, if you had unhappy relationship, then physical, psychological, even brain activities wise deterioration recorded by this study. And I recommend again to watch uh, detail of this study on YouTube. Let us conclude this topic with this interesting study by Hufford in 2007, uh, challenges in defining and measuring well-being and their implications for policy. He concluded by asking what would our world look like if policy was seeking to promote well-being. Governments would organize programs that promote capability, engagement, positive relationships and health. We might visualize a world where people have vitality, uh, develop their full potential, respect one another and live in harmony. So, it supports to have some well-being enhancing national level policies as well as programs. At the end, let us summarize what we have covered in this chapter. We discussed about happiness and well-being theories, number of theories we have covered here. Then we discussed about cultural orientation and happiness. We discussed various ways to measure happiness. Important research findings related to well-being have been addressed here. We discussed demographic variables as well as other important factors for happiness. Importance of happiness as well as various strategies to improve happiness have been discussed in this chapter. However, more strategies can be addressed if we have application focused course in future. I hope you have understood various things related to happiness in this chapter. Thank you.